Hi everyone, my name is Matt and welcome to my channel. I got a couple of these gross looking crypt guards from the new range of Flesh Eater Quartz models, so let's paint one of them fast using contrast paints. I started out with my favorite method of priming, which is a base coat of gray primer followed by a subtle, zenithal style spray with white from the top and sides. Alternatively, you could prime your model with a solid coat of white or any off-white spray and get great results too. I want this model to have a sickly, greenish-gray kind of skin. I made a mix of mostly croak green with a little bit of storm vermin fur, about a 5 to 1 mix. Croak green is a little too green on its own, and mixing in some gray helps dull down the color. Even though croak green is considered a shade paint, apply this mix just like you would any other contrast paint. Work on one section at a time, and apply the paint evenly. The paint will pool in some recesses, which is necessary to create shading, but we don't want too much pooling. After painting a section I like to wipe the brush off on a paper towel and soak up any excess paint. I want to add some color variations to his skin, and one way I'm going to do that is by mixing in a little Griff Charger Gray into the Croak Green. About one part gray to three parts green. I'm painting it on his hands and feet to make them a little darker, as well as along the hair on his back. You can easily blend the color by painting one section at a time, then rinse the brush, dry it on a paper towel, and then use the clean brush to smooth out the edge. This paint is pretty weak and transparent, and it probably won't need much blending. When that was dry, I applied a second coat to deepen the color. Next, I used an old favorite, Magos Purple, to add some more color variations. I painted some on the boils, lower lip, around his eyes, and around any scratches and cuts. I'm trying to keep the paint thin, like a glaze, and not allow the paint to pool. Just like with the last layer, you can easily blend the wet paint by rinsing and drying the brush, and then running the clean brush along the edge. Next I painted the mouth with Sigvald Burgundy, including the teeth. I'd like to go with a gray color for the hair, and rather than contrast paint, I'm going to use an opaque gray. I had some storm vermin fur on my palette from earlier, and that will make a good base coat color. I want to smooth out the transition a little bit, and I'm blending the edge of the gray just like with the contrast paint earlier. Paint a small area, rinse the brush, dry it on a paper towel, and then run the clean brush along the edge to smooth out the wet paint. After the first layer was dry, I applied a second coat. After the hair dried, I shaded it with a mix of equal parts Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil, which I affectionately call Armor Wash. I find this mix really useful, and I'd recommend mixing an entire pot of it. Check out this video here to learn about mixing up a custom color. While the shade is drying, I painted the bones and teeth with Bone White. Use a really sharp brush and try to leave a little bit of the dark red showing between each tooth. Now is a great time to ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. 
and please click the like button if you like the video. Every little bit helps the channel grow and helps more people find content like this. Your support really means a lot. Thanks. Then I shaded the bones with Skeleton Horde. Rather than apply the paint all over, I tried to apply it in just the recesses. Next, I carefully painted the eyes with white. followed by a very thin glaze of Magos Purple. I diluted Wildwood with an equal amount of contrast medium and painted all the fabric. I want to end up with two different tones for the fabric, but this mix will serve as a base coat for both. After the wild wood mix dried, I painted a second layer on the loincloth only. Next I painted the straps with a layer of black templar. The brown underlayer shows through a little and makes a nice dark brown. Since I had the Black Templar on my palette, I also went and painted the claws. I base coated the sword with Iron Hand Steel. You might need two or three coats for an even finish. After the base coat dried, I went back to my trusty armor wash mix and shaded the sword. When shading blades, I like to let the paint pool in opposite directions on each facet. It's not incredibly realistic, but I think the effect is nice. I allowed it to dry and then painted a second layer to deepen the color. I want to add some rust to the blade, and it's real easy to do with Mornfang Brown, thinned with some water. Add a few spots here and there, and build up the color with a second layer if you like. At this stage you could call the model finished, but I'll keep going and add a few highlights. I highlighted the loincloth with Xandri dust. If you thin the paint with water and have very little on your brush, you can make some light scratches on the fabric.
Next, I highlighted the edges of the darker leather straps with Bane Blade Brown, and I added some scratches afterwards, just like with the loincloth. I thinned off-white with equal parts water, and with barely any paint on the brush, I highlighted the bones. In some areas, I painted the off-white in a really thin layer, almost like a glaze, and in other areas, I painted a sharper line highlight. It all depends on the shape of the surface and how you'd like to accent the edges. Next, I highlighted the hair with Storm Vermin Fur. You could dry brush this stage if you like. If I was painting a whole army of these, I know I would. Then I mixed in some white for the next highlight, and picked out some of the hairs near the top. And last but not least is the sword. I picked out the edges with Stormhost Silver, and then I added a few scratches here and there too. If you make any mistakes on the skin, Nurgling Green mixed with white is a really close match. The exact ratio of the mix will vary depending on how the base coat layer is dried. I used an old brush and covered the base with a generous layer of textured paint. While the paint was still wet, I sprinkled on some coarse gravel and fine sand and allowed it to dry. I painted the entire base with Rhinox hide, then dry brushed with Steel Legion Drab. I painted the rocks with Dawnstone, and then shaded them with Agrax Earthshade. I painted the edge of the base with Rhinox hide, and when that was dry, I added some patches of dead static grass with super glue. And here's the finished Crypt Guard, and he's looking gross. I've seen a lot of different color schemes for these models, and for this one I went with something close to the box art. I have a second Crypt Guard model that I'll be painting soon, and I think something different would be fun to do. What colors would you like to see? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Thank you all for your continued support, for liking and subscribing, and for all of your kind comments. The channel keeps growing and reaching a wider audience, and it's really cool to see. Well that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy painting.